Okay. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, let's uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Again, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, United States of America, to the Republic, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, can I get a roll call, please? Chair Hunter Chang. Here. Vice Chair Jeff Buzel. Present. Commissioner Eugene Ramirez. I am here. Commissioner Al Bogue. He is excused. Commissioner Victoria Firestone. Alternate Zilla Tobiano. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Jennifer. So the agenda's been posted and um, at this point, uh, we'd like to welcome public comments. If anyone here would like to speak to something that's not on the agenda, please uh, state so now. There's nothing in the chat and I see no one raising their hands. Mm, okay, thank you. Okay, seeing no public comments, let's uh, move on. Uh, commissioner reports. Uh, has any of the commissioners uh, attended any meetings or conferences? Nope. Okay. And I see the mayor is joining us. Okay, uh, moving on to department reports, uh, police report with Chief Encontro. Thank you, uh, Chair and uh, Commissioners. You've read the report. Um, only a couple of things that I'd like to highlight. Number one is um, we have had an increase of 28% of uh, for part one crimes. That increase has been fueled by uh, crimes of opportunity, thefts again. And um, it is uh, crimes connected to uh, thefts from people leaving property unsecured outside, not uh, locking their cars, um, thefts from mailboxes, package thefts, gardening equipment, and also identity theft. Um, most of these um, can be easily taken care of by remembering to bring things in, locking your, and shutting and locking your garage, locking your cars, not leaving items of value. Uh, we've been um, providing some information. We're working on some flyers, additional flyers to give to the community dealing with uh, the theft of uh, gardening equipment. We're going to encourage again, the residents to allow the gardeners to park in their the residents' driveways um, instead of having them park on the streets which uh, provides opportunities for those driving by to steal their gardening equipment. Um, personnel front, uh, we uh, have about 26, we have 26 of our 30 positions filled. We have one officer starting the Sheriff's Academy next week, um, Jocelyn Serrano, she was a cadet and we were looking forward to her successfully completing the Academy in six months. Um, our recent hires um, have been doing well. We have a person um, who is going to be a lateral. Uh, looks like they are just about finished. We provided a conditional job offer and waiting for the last two parts of the um, um, hiring process. And I think it's important to note that uh, we have a fairly expedient process for hiring new employees. We work very quickly from the time that we identify an applicant to uh, providing an initial um, interview and all the way through the last two parts of the process, which are a, a psychological exam and also a um, medical exam. Uh, we do move fast. We uh, think we do, a, do very well, better than other agencies. Uh, the one thing that's been helping us is the support of the city council and the community to uh, make sure that we have enough people to be hired. We don't have any issues that other departments have concerning budget as far as personnel, which is a, a big plus for us. And um, 
One difficulty that we see in the very near future is part of the legislation that was signed by the governor um, will require the uh, psychological interview to include uh, examination of the person's bias. Um, the police officer standards and training post is going to work with uh, the legislature in trying to come up with screening questions and uh, some sort of criteria that will meet this law. Um, that's one of the problems that we have is there's no criteria that was built in the uh, passing of the, the legislation. And um, we could have uh, delays in the psychological exam and that will be starting January 1st of 2021. Um, so hopefully things will be worked out and hopefully we will um, also have uh, the ability to continue to hire without uh, difficulty. Um, this week, as you all know, tomorrow's election day. Hopefully everyone has already voted or will be voting it with everybody else uh, tomorrow. Um, I voted today at the middle school and there was no wait. So that was very nice. And then um, what we've done for the community to ensure the safety and that there's no infringement of anyone's ability to vote, we have uh, all of our officers are working. There's no days off this week. So we have uh, two sergeants and between six and eight officers uh, working on each of the two shifts from uh, yesterday through Friday. And um, we have that ability to protect any uh, city assets or community assets uh, as necessary for response. And should any kind of uh, civil disturbance come up within the city or we're required to assist another agency, we will have people that will remain here in the city and be able to do their patrol and prevent crime. Uh, we have uh, worked with uh, the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, LA County Sheriff's, LAPD, the Joint Regional Information Center that uh, covers uh, nine counties in Southern California. Uh, to establish a um, dashboard for intelligence sharing and information. And there are briefings every night at 830 uh, for us to listen in on. And also uh, we get briefings uh, daily and updates from our partners in the FBI and the, and the JRIC is what we call it. The information is also shared with the fire department. The fire department also has a very similar um, uh, organization of uh, information sharing. And I don't want to take anything away from the chief, but uh, it, it's a pretty robust um, system and it's much better than what we had in May during the rioting following um, the issues in Minneapolis. Um, one of the other highlights is we have our new traffic radar sign um, working all over the city. It is very visible. Maybe you've seen it on Sierra Madre, San Marino, Los Robles, and a couple of other places in the, the uh, city. It's been helpful. It provides us uh, speed data. So we know uh, what the average speed is uh, based upon time. We also uh, know the volume of traffic. And uh, when someone is exceeding the speed limit, um, two uh, red and blue lights light up. And they are very bright. And um, like today we had the um, sign near Lorraine and you could clearly see the red and blue lights north of Huntington Drive. Uh, I wanna thank the uh, Public Works for helping us uh, get that thing assembled and get it out in the field. They've been doing an unbelievable job keeping our vehicles operating and uh, keeping our new equipment out there. Uh, we are anticipating our new vehicles to be here within six to eight weeks. And uh, the motorcycles about the same time, if not sooner. Uh, both of our officers that we selected to be motor officers have uh, passed and are licensed, and they'll be going to a uh, motor school in the be probably just after the first of the year. Then uh, the program will be going and we'll be able to do a lot for uh, traffic safety. I'm very excited about that, and uh, we're anticipating two more um, small, portable. Um, traffic feedback signs coming to us very shortly. And those can be mounted on uh, different lampposts and poles 
and they provide the same information and we can put them on some of the smaller streets to uh, discourage speeding. Um, that's my report. If you have any questions, please uh, ask. Yeah, Chief, I just have a question on the, the speed trailers. Um, do we do anything with that data? Um, do we look at uh, trends and then perhaps um, put an officer out there when we notice a lot of speeding at a particular time of the day or day of the week, perhaps? Yes. Um, you know, before we relied upon um, complaints, we relied upon um, traffic collision information and also um, the type of collisions that are occurring, the primary collision factor. Now we add in the data that we get from the speed uh, trailer sign and we can deploy officers and we do deploy officers to those streets based upon that information and based upon the time. We're also, uh, all of our officers are now LIDAR certified and we're able to, and which is a little bit different, uh, it's a laser device instead of a radar device for measuring speed. And so we're able to use that. Thank you. Any other comments for Chief and Contro on the police report? Well, thank you, Chief. Uh, can I get a motion to accept and file the police report? Move to accept and file the report. Jeff? I'll second that. Eugene? Uh, all those in favor? I'll second it. Aye. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, great, motion passes. Uh, moving on to the fire department, uh, Chief Roida, please. Um, Chair, um, uh, you have the re written report in front of you, but there's a couple things that uh, I wanted to just expand upon um, because we get a number of questions about some of the uh, areas in the report. Uh, one being our response to the coronavirus and what we publish. Um, uh, we've had a separate committee um, engaged in public messaging since the early stages of the uh, virus here in the United States and uh, meeting weekly for a number of months uh, to discuss uh, how we message to our residents, uh, interpreting the and publishing the county health orders, uh, working with uh, impacted businesses on, on the health orders, um, trying to ensure the safety of our residents, making sure they're uh, well informed and understand um, what's at stake. Uh, Mayor sits on the committee with us, uh, provided uh, excellent input as the city manager and uh, chief of police, myself, and uh, our planning and building director sits on, sits in on an ad hoc basis, along with Amanda and uh, uh, Merlot and Jennifer. Um, so one of the things I just wanted to chat about is the, the data that we publish because we get questions about whether or not the city is actually compiling that data. We publish data that we receive from LA County and it's actually in a, in, on their website. It's on a table and they track data by city. Um, un unfortunately, our numbers um, have, have steadied recently, but they were in a, in, a, in an incline for the months of September and October. And we're about at 100 of our residents that have been infected since the uh, county started uh, tracking the information. Uh, we've also had two deaths that were reported by LA County of, of residents um, from uh, COVID-19. Um, the city does not do any any contact tracing. We don't do any compiling of data, but we do report what the, what the county gives us. And that does not include names or addresses of any, of any uh, persons that have been infected with the virus. Um, 
So I, I do include that as one of the uh, areas of, of uh, the fire department's responsibility. And it's really covered under, under our emergency management responsibilities um, and uh, uh, available for any questions you have about that. Seeing none, I'll go on to just uh, touch on election security. Uh, I, I think it's an understatement, the chief's involvement, the chief of police involvement in election preparation. Uh, he spearheaded a, an entire uh, effort to train uh, uh, police officers from the entire county in, uh, in protest management. Uh, they invited the fire department to participate in, in observing their tactics uh, so that when we respond, uh, together that uh, we're just that much more uh, in sync. We understand uh, the, the language that we're speaking and, and we can really uh, uh, make sure we give the most effective response when called to act on injuries within a, um, a civil unrest situation. Uh, the chief and I collaborated to put a plan together for our city that included opening up the uh, emergency operations center Sunday morning, and that'll be through tomorrow night. Uh, and then we'll reevaluate uh, our need for um, maintaining uh, sort of our, our position in the EOC to uh, track what's happening in our region. Because we are uh, receiving a number of intel reports. Uh, I can't tell you how many conference calls the chief of police and I have been on um, briefing uh, mostly from the FBI and our JRIC partners uh, on election security and, and what is happening. Um, um, so we believe we're prepared and uh, we've certainly put some time and effort into making sure that our city is, is safe and uh, prepared and our city staff is, is aware of what, we're, uh, what our plan is. The last uh, item I wanted to touch on is is uh, two new employees. They were not included in the report. Uh, we actually made uh, job offers to three uh, persons. Um, unfortunately, at the last minute, one of those individuals declined to go to a different agency. Uh, but Eric Basley, our newest firefighter, he started, uh, he started his orientation today. And we have a second candidate that uh, we're trying to get to a uh, a medical examination and uh, trying to get him on board this week. Uh, we've been pushing our, our uh, local clinic that uh, gives our employment physicals to, uh, to move our people up to the front of the line. Uh, we've been pushing our background investigators and our, and our human resources department. And they've just done a great job with implementation of the, of the new application system where uh, applicants can go online now for throughout the state of California and uh, and uh, submit applications based on our job posting and then they've been great at actually processing our applications so um, uh, that concludes my report uh, if you have any questions I'm available Uh, any questions for uh, Chief Rueda? Okay, hearing none. Uh, thank you, Chief Rueda. Uh, can I get a motion to accept and file the fire department report? Yeah, I'll move that we uh Accept the uh, fire department report. Second. Okay. Thank you, Jane. Jeff, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. Okay. Uh, moving on to uh, Parks and Public Works, Director Throne. Thank you, Chair Chang. Uh, uh, I added something to my typical report, and that's uh, at the beginning of it, I will be uh, providing you with a follow up on any questions that may arise from the public from uh, your prior meetings. That way we've got sort of a record as to 
um, how we responded to it. There were two questions at the last public safety uh, committee meeting. Uh, one was utility cuts made in uh, Devonport Road. Uh, that was very unfortunate, but there were gas leaks that they had to deal with. So in those cases, the gas company and any of the other uh, utility companies are authorized uh, to go in and uh, cut through our brand new pavement. Uh, they are required by city ordinance to come back in and do a very mu a much more extensive paving job than just, uh, just their uh, trench. So they'll be working on that. Um, the other item was uh, some very... Uh, good observations about house, the house numbering that we did at our uh, last resurfacing project. And I'll be meeting with the chiefs and the community development director uh, to look at standardizing what that, what the color and the numbers look like so that uh, I can include that in next, uh, in this coming year's uh, pavement project. Um, I wanted to let you know that we did a soft opening on the Lacey Park restrooms on Friday and they're gorgeous. So I uh, should all come down and take advantage of them. Uh, the um, annual sidewalk project is completed. We managed to uh, work with our contractor and get an extra three tenths of a mile. So we actually did 1.4 miles of sidewalk this year, uh, in addition to some other work that uh, uh, the council uh, generously funded. Um, we also I went to council on Friday to uh, get uh, appropriations to take care of Chief Encontro's police station. Um, as I had reported, uh, maybe not as uh, directly as uh, perhaps it ought to have been, uh, but his building has been uh, quite infested with a variety of different uh, pests, as well as uh, he has electrical problems and plumbing issues. Uh, so the council was very generous in uh, creating or in approving appropriations to get some work done. Uh, they will be moving out of their building uh, temporarily uh, the week of Thanksgiving. They'll be gone a month into trailers in the back uh, corporation yard, city hall parking area. And that's so that we can work on their building without disrupting their uh, operations. Uh, City Hall will also be closed one day. Uh, it'll be closed the Wednesday before Thanksgiving to the public and to staff. Uh, we're going to be fumigating all three buildings and uh, consequently uh, it's very unsafe for folks to be inside. So that's going to be going on there. Um, the last thing that I wanted to do was I did promise a uh, demonstration of the uh, Go Request app and uh, if you all can see this screen here, uh, this is uh, the city of San Marino's webpage. If you go down to how do I, and you go up to public works service request, you will see that um, there uh, is uh, a, uh, a place where you can choose either you have a code enforcement issue or a public works issue. If you click on public works, you can see a variety of different things that probably break that uh, we would like to know about. Um, it was uh, mentioned at our planning meeting last Monday that it would be great to have uh, a category for Lacey Park in the medians. Uh, so we did put those in there. So if for instance, uh, let's say you see that there's a uh, need for a sidewalk repair, you would click on it, you would, uh, drag your cursor to where it is. Uh, you could put in your detailed problem, you can insert a picture and then you submit it. Uh, another easy way to do this is to download the application onto your mobile device. It's actually much simpler. It automatically geocodes you and it will allow you to take access your camera and take a picture uh, so that uh, you can directly submit that to Public Works. Uh, this is a very handy, uh, way for us to manage requests. Uh, we actually ask that our uh, employees do this uh, so that we can keep track of it. So we have folks from recreation and library and, uh, and some of the other departments uh, do this so that we can keep track of and be able to respond to people that are making uh, requests for service. And that concludes the public works report for this month.
Thank you, Director Throne. Uh, any questions for Director Throne? Uh, I did want to mention, uh, Chair Chang, that uh, uh, the uh, we did ask our vendor to look at all the city limits because uh, depending on where you are, sometimes the application on the mobile device may think you're in a different city. So we are having them check out, especially the west side of town, where the, the city limits tends to uh, be in different places depending on where you're standing. And uh, we, we should be able to uh, have that area of town uh, at least verify that it is accurate and correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, Move to receive and file the report. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 None. Okay. Moving on, uh, I believe we're approving the minutes from our last meeting on October 5th. Um, can we get a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting on the 5th of October? Also move that we uh, approve the minutes from October 5, 2020. Thank you, Gene. Second. Uh, Jeff, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. No. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, new business, purchase of thermal imaging cameras for fire personnel. Okay, um, I believe this is Chief Rueda speaking to this. Yes, Chief So, uh, Commissioners, what you have before you is a report um, uh, for the uh, purchase of uh, thermal imaging cameras. These were the result of a very generous donation from one of our residents, actually uh, gave the fire department uh, $10,000 and provided $10,000 to the police department. Um, after a uh, review of, of equipment that uh, I felt would both improve uh, uh, potential for saving someone's life in our, in our city and uh, bringing a new capability to the fire department, uh, we selected um, the purchase of thermal imaging cameras as uh, a worthy uh, worthy purchase for this uh, generous donation. Thermal imaging cameras were first introduced to the fire service about 15 years ago, and they actually uh, allow uh, fire, firefighting personnel to see through smoke. Uh, we can see the heat signature of a person uh, or uh, different uh, aspects of, of the inside of a, of a house or, or building that would allow us uh, not only to uh, improve the time to rescue an individual, but also uh, allow a firefighter to self-rescue if they somehow became uh, trapped in a, in, uh, in a house or in a, in a building. Um, these uh, devices, like uh, most technology, have gotten, uh, have not only improved uh, in terms of their performance, but they've also gotten smaller and uh, less expensive. So the device that we are actually pursuing, it's hard to, to show you here, but the device that we're actually pursuing is about the size of a small flashlight. Uh, these are much larger devices, um, the size of a large flashlight previously, but these will actually be issued to each firefighter. They'll hang on their turnout coat and they, they have a small screen here that uh, would allow the uh, firefighter to, to basically see through the smoke. So um, I think it's a worthy cause, a worthy uh, capability, and um, certainly someday may uh, prove valuable in, in saving a life or preventing a, a firefighter from, um, you know, from um, suffering a serious injury or death. Uh, this is a receive and file, but I did want to share with you uh, 
um, what we are doing with uh, very uh, donation we received from uh, one of our residents. Thank you for that, Chief Areda. Um, you mentioned uh, the police department also received a, um, a gift. Um, is that also to purchase these cameras for the police department or? Uh, Chair, we did receive um, a similar donation and we are evaluating um, some items to uh, purchase for the uh, department right now. Okay. I'm just thinking can also help with the police department if you're trying to find someone at night or yeah, right. Yeah, we uh, that prevent the police department be a violation potentially the Fourth Amendment. So there's cases dealing with thermal imagers used by law enforcement. So that's probably one of the issues the chief would have to address. Yeah, that was uh, that was going to be part of my comment that. Uh, we don't have the same uh, ability to use certain technology without the warrants or um, some other uh, permissions. Okay. Chief Ferreira, just out of curiosity, um, this looks like a, a, a very good use of the money. Um, I'm looking at their website as we speak. It, it seems um, like it would be very helpful. Um, but was curious as to whether there are were other technologies that you also considered and and did not go with for the the use of the ten thousand um, dollars. thermal imaging technologies or other items in general. Other equipment, other other things that would benefit a firefighter. Not that uh, benefit a firefighter. Last year we received a, another generous donation. And we purchased uh, rescue equipment if, uh, for a river rescue. If someone were to get caught in one of our three rivers, uh, it would really be a challenge to try to rescue. But I thought we should at least have some capacity to rescue an unfortunate soul that falls in our river. Uh, this was also on our list of, of items. The one other item that, um, that I, uh, that was considered is is a is a rescue tool like the Jaws of Life rescue tool. Um, that is uh, something I don't I don't I've been told it may not fit on our current apparatus, so that was a limitation. It also requires additional training and sometimes requires additional personnel. So uh, that got put on the uh, still on the research burner for us to look at and, and uh, I would like to have that capability. One of the things that happens in a, in a significant uh, event, disaster, is that uh, mutual aid, uh, our mutual aid system that we enjoy day to day goes away. And basically the borders come up in our, in our system. So we wouldn't be able to rely on the help from Alhambra, Pasadena, and others that, that carry this specialized rescue equipment. So I, um, that would be some, a, a future capability that if we got an opportunity to do so, I would look to see if we could uh, provide that for the department. But this was the um, met kind of our donation criteria of providing some kind of improved capacity for our residents and for our firefighters. Thank you. So assuming we get the approval from council next month, uh, when do you think this will be available in the field? They should be available right away. Um, in fact, our, our vendors uh, ship the sample and uh, is very anxious to um, to ship the balance. Okay. Great. Any other questions for Chief Rada? Okay. Can I get a motion to receive and file 
this report. Can I ask a question? This first I've heard of this, I'm sorry. Okay, sure, Mayor. I know it's a little out of um, context, but I just wanted to see if this will be enough. Is it um, enough for one crew assigned at a time or do officers, firefighters, um, I'm sorry, get individual cameras that are with their individual gear? I'm just wondering what the quantity is and the cost, you know, how that works out. Or would this be something you'd see us um, buying enough so that everybody would have one? Thank you. Uh, otherwise, uh, we have a we have one thermal imaging camera now. It's much larger than the current product, and it's carried by the captain. And it's a uh, bulky to carry. Um, this is a, an improved technology, a better um, a better screen, and it's intended to have one per person. So one per firefighter. Um, so that if in the event they did get separated, um, they would have their own, number one. And then when we, on those rare occasions, we do hire back multiple crews, everybody would have this capability. I have a question. So, Chief, the $12,085.71, that would outfit you with enough devices so that every firefighter in San Marino would have one. Does it also include spares in case one goes down or two go down? It actually does include uh, 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 two spares for um, in the event one goes down. Okay, uh, any other questions for Chief Rueda? No cameras? Okay, um, did we get a motion to receive and file this report? Also move. Okay, Gene, thank you. Second. Okay. Jeff, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, uh, that brings us to the end of the meeting. Our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, December 7th at 7 p.m. And um, if there's no other questions, um, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you all for calling in. Don't forget to vote. And have a great Thanksgiving if we don't see you beforehand. Thanks all. Thank, Thank you all. Okay. Bye-bye.